Hello, hello. Tuning in for the August 2021 release notes. Um, so let's kick it off. So we got the release notes over on the right, and we'll be showing you some of the changes on the left. Turn the music down here. All right, so to kick it off, the uh, the biggest change that, that occurred uh, this in August was the addition of what we're calling headless options. So we'll show you what that looks like here. Once our internet catches up. So headless options are uh, a bunch of quick jump points to talk about how you can access data outside of building it inside of web engine and using Parsley templates. Um, some of this may be new to people out there, but it's good to know. So if you click this headless options, it's only available if you are running in hybrid mode. Uh, and I can show you how to turn on hybrid mode real quick. We go over here underneath general you have web engine mode and there's headless hybrid and traditional you want to be running under hybrid mode to get that you can also run under headless mode but headless mode means that pages will not render templates it'll just render JSON so hybrid modes okay everything starts as default underneath traditional mode so get in the hybrid mode and then you go over to whatever content you want to look at so you want to look at persona content click into one and see what the headless options are. Uh, and I think it's key to know that when you're dealing with a, a content model that does not have a view, which we call like a data set or a headless content model, it only has four options, right? But if you're working with uh, a particular content model that does have a view, like our homepage, you'll see that there is six options. So check that out. It's really nice. These are just jump links to see, get access to the data you want to read. Uh, really, really useful. Uh, there's also the introduction of these docs links that if you click the doc link, it'll kick open to wherever the docs are, are related to for that particular piece of functionality. And so just be on the lookout for all that. All right, so keep cruising on with the release notes. Um, there's now the, the support for wildcard redirects and how that looks is go underneath redirects. Everyone access this, there's an option to choose between internal, external and wildcard, right? So internal allows you to search for something. If I was type like homepage, you're going to pick an option here and this will automatically populate the reference that you're going to have the redirect with. So you create the path over here and you create the reference over here. So before we only had this one type, which is internal. Uh, now we have external, which lets you put in a URL. So you could put in, uh, you could redirect to google.com, for example. Don't want to do that, but, but you could do that. And then the third option is going to be wildcard. And wildcard lets you, you do pathing like this. Uh, let's you select put a wild card here and i could say like i don't know my blog articles or something like that so you go star slash star and then kind of it follows the the apache style where where the wild card gets filled in where like money side one is going to be the reference to the first wild card and money sign two would be the second reference so if you were moving say you had a blog thing that went category blog slug and you want to move the whole thing to say a uh, parent page that was called blog, this is what the wildcard redirect would look like and it overtake everything with this pathing. Obviously this is this is a wildcard, so if I was to put this in, everything with that pathing structure would be adapted. So, but how you make the wildcards more precise is you, you add a part of the path up here in front of it to make sure that it's hit. So that's gonna be useful, especially for people migrating onto Zesty from other places is that you can quickly uh, you know, adapt an old style of uh, pathing and the, the category pathing, whatever your parent child was, into a new style very quickly with a single entry. So that's a nice little update and that's underneath the redirect section which has the target icon on the left. Uh, we launched or launched re-updated GraphQL. We have a GraphQL package. So if you just search Zesty GraphQL, we relaunched this package uh, to work with the latest version of Apollo. And there's instructions here on how you run it with any instance. 
Uh, you have to host your own, but you can also just run it locally to test. Uh, but instructions are here. And there's even um, examples how to deploy this in the Google Cloud using Cloud Run, which is really quick and efficient and cheap. So you can just run your own uh, GraphQL server right from there. Uh, let me see. I'm going to pull up a link of one of our GraphQL servers. Uh, just for example. I'll show you what that looks like because it's pretty cool. So we launched, we have a, a demo site coming out shortly, which we're calling ZFlix. And this is the GraphQL endpoint for the ZFlix uh, demo site. And you can see it, it launches you into this nice little interface. You can see all your content models here. Uh, and you can see their fields you can drive in. And you can create different queries over here on the right. This is a query builder. So we're, what we're looking at is the Apollo interface for GraphQL. And I'll just show you a quick uh, what that looks like. So we'll grab movies and shows. Oops, got to hit this plus button here. So if I want to get all movie and show titles, I run that query. I'm getting null. Let's see. May not be able to show this demo another time. Let's see if this runs. There we go. So there's a simple GraphQL query, movies and shows. And what we did is we named all of the, we made up movie names, Zopgun and Stranger Zings. You'll see it in the demo uh, if you do want to check that out. But this is running GraphQL against the Zesty instance here. And you can just see that running. So we can add uh, additional information like poster, for example. And this is going to return uh, I don't know why I'm using that. Their interface is cool, but honestly, sometimes it's easier to type. So this is going to now give us the poster item, right? So this is the Zopgun poster over here. And since we have our um, the image optimizer, image optimizer, image optimizer running on it, um, you can just run all the commands from image optimizer to change the image on the fly. So with GraphQL, you get full access to the manipulation of images and however you want to get it in GraphQL. All right, so continuing on. There's a, a bunch of, so the release notes are on the website. Um, there are a bunch of just U, general UI updates, but the big ones were the GraphQL update, wildcard redirects, and the headless options. Uh, there's subtle enhancements to the way item locks work. Uh, WYSIWYG editor height has been changed for scrolling. Uh, there's some jumping cursor issues on the article writer field type that was corrected. Uh, there's a, some multi-lang changes where you can see this, where it's now showing the language of the actual codes when you're doing a uh, category relationship on the dropdown. Why this exists is it's kind of confusing. If you cut a new language, it copies the existing language. So if you cut, um, if you add Spanish to English, then you will see... Um, that the Spanish version gets copied from English. So like it's really confusing at first, so you have to change things. So this, this little signifier is very helpful uh, from a user experience standpoint. Uh, we've been changing just subtle design elements of the way like global search looks and some inputs. Uh, highlighting and obviously the navigation on the left has changed. So uh, that's all the updates we have for you today. So thank you for tuning in and thanks for being part of the Zesty fam. Have a good day.